Hello and welcome to the 21st episode or installment of the Extreme Hardware Podcast. Today we have our southern wow. brother. <laughs> um, Wait, which one? Right. Which one of us? Uh, I mean... <laughs> okay, so, so, so to, to provide some context, not, I'm not, I'm not. Um, I have been gone for a few weeks because I have just moved to the south of the U.S., It's not that I, I actually just blanked I mean, on your name. Valid. I'll be honest. <laughs> but, but, wow. But the brother is what's done. You know what? We're, we're being we're gone so it. long, I forgot. <laughs> yes. Simmons. Simmons is joining us. Thank Hello. you, Simmons. Hello, Simmons. Hello, How Simmons. Doing, Simmons. Um. Anyway, we also have our northern brother with us, Chris. I'm not from the north, you idiot. I'm Didn't... technically in the south. That's that's You're in Kentucky. Yeah, that is the south. Yeah, that's the south. It's the south of the gets. <laughs> what? That's very yes. Southern. We were a border state in the Civil War. Half of the state seceded. But you're kind of north. Okay. Like if you were to draw a line. Okay. So. In the oh my god. So, I'm no. You, do, do, Alex, we're not getting into this. Yeah. You are a foreigner, and you do not know you, our finish, people or our ways. Let's finish the introduction. <laughs> that and is then right. School you on the way. Of, of the <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, moving on sharply from Kentucky, which is, anyway. Um, oh, yes, we finally managed to wrangle him back. He was quite hard to get a hold of this week for some reason, but we wrapped a rope around him and we dragged him, and uh, we have our hooved wonder Frick Frock. Yeah, that's kinky. Yeah, we did. Me. <laughs> I was here. <laughs> I don't I know what you're talking me. about. <laughs> I, don't, I don't listen to these lies, Frick. Anyway. Um, we also have Andrew joining us and Alex, myself, as... Oh, yeah, that's you. You're Alex. Yes, that's me. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Okay, so... So, so what the about Kentucky, with, uh, then? The, the defining line of what is the South, it is... It starts with Virginia, is, like, the northernmost southern state, and then it okay. moves west from there. But can I just ask? Just go find the Mason-Dixon no, 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 line no, no, and go no. from there. Can I just ask? If you were to, like, the very top of the U.S., excluding Maine? Alaska, which is, like, yeah, well, kind of, because that's, like, separate almost. Yeah, there you go. But yeah, yeah, Alaska yeah, doesn't count. Everything it's Canada south of the Mason-Dixon line. And then you go all the way to the bottom, like, to yes. the very bottom of Texas, right? Or Florida, actually, sorry. And you were to draw a line horizontally in the middle. Kentucky mind, would be above what is that. defined as the South is the the boundary line that was established in the American Civil War. So, so is Texas yes. a southern state? It is literally bordering Mexico, yeah. Alex. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah, as southern Kentucky as you can is, get in the lower Kentucky border. Kentucky is border very border. northern, yeah, so, but it's so a if southern I remember state. correctly, uh, yeah. uh, a lot of the states in the Midwest uh, of the U.S. were not even established. By that point, so Texas was just a part of a massive blob of basically the Wild West. The Republic of Texas. So Yeah, Wild Wild West. I'm looking I'm looking up some foods of Kentucky. <laughs> and some of them, <laughs> some of them sound like from horrible. Kentucky. Like okay, when I say the when I say the phrase spoon bread, what exactly are you visualizing? Uh, cuddling with bread. Mini well, Yes. Well, apparently it's one of the most famous Kentucky foods of all time. There's a picture. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I have never are... heard of it. That, so it's a, bread. It's, a, it's, a, it's a traditional a Kentucky dish. It's believed to originate from the Native American. Oh, good. Native Americans. So it's cornmeal and it has a consistency of pudding rather than bread. And, uh, I mean, I posted a photo of it. I still don't know what the hell it is. It's some kind of bread, but it looks like a, like a popsicle uh, no, stick dude, of bread. No, I have that's, never that's heard of that, sitting on ever. Top of it. The, 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 the bread is the yellow thing underneath of it. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> that is quite literally the like a tomahawk ribeye sitting on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Frick, I'm sorry. Do you do you do a food review YouTube no, no, channel? No, 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 he you you should know no. It's very specific here. <laughs> no, it's still not. food. Technically, Frick, <laughs> do you put it in your mouth most of the time? Most of nice. the time. Nice. Don't you put it in your mouth? That's uh, Alex. You're Canadian. You should know this. I'm not actually. Yeah, you're close enough to Canadian. 
He hasn't gotten a citizenship yet. Yeah, exactly, Frick. Chris. Yeah, so that's me. So moving on to I'm our Frick actual Chris. real tech topics. Um, so... Hi, this <laughs> no, this is important. <laughs> Wait, what okay. is important? I don't we know. Have, we have some leaks of the new <laughs> Intel i9-10900. Um, it apparently is a 10-core, 20-thread CPU with a base clock of 2.8 gigahertz with boost clock up to 5 gigahertz and 65 watt TDP. Now, this is a WCCF article, so take that with a grain of salt. And oh, also, also worth noting that they are now using thermal velocity boost on desktop chips, which means if you cool your CPU enough, it'll boost higher, which is what AMD is doing and what Intel has been doing in mobile for a while. Allegedly. Is, is it the 10... 900s oh, or wait. just 10 900 like is yeah, this just a 10 900 10 900. Yeah. It, it's not the unlocked one it's just okay so because that 2.8 gigahertz base clock i know base is really dumb to kind of think about with intel cpus but it seems really low because that's um, how they like, get the 65 watt tdp because i was about to say why yeah. why though because there's a lot of i don't know how to put it maybe publicity with the 9900k how uh, people didn't uh, do I want to say didn't understand? But basically, you know, everyone, not everyone, a lot of people were like, it says 95 watts. It's not 95 watts. When I plug it in, turn it on, it use, and, you know, run Blender, yeah. it uses more than 95 well, watts. They here's, seem here's to be the making the situation worse for themselves. It's just how TDP works. The issue is motherboard manufacturers don't follow the specification, um, which is fine. Like, that's not considered me? overclocking as far as Intel is concerned. Uh, for certain motherboards, sure, I would... Well, oh, so yeah, yeah, here's yeah. the deal. Here's the deal. According to the leak spec sheets, the uh, 10900 uh, has a single core boost clock of 5 gigahertz. Um, turbo boost max 3.0, turbo boost 3.0, absolute max 5.1, a thermal velocity boost, it can do 5.2. I'm not actually sure how that would work with multi core enhancement, but 5 gigahertz is fine. So at 2.8 gigahertz, Intel is saying it will use no more than 65 watts. However, since multi-core enhancement is on by default, the whole damn CPU is going to be running at 5 gigahertz, which is a lot more than 65 watts, which is fine, but that's not really Intel's fault because that's not what the 65 watts means. It's really, the, the issue is kind of like, the no, issue is misinterpreting understand. the spec, although, yeah, it's kind of Intel's fault for not clarifying what that means. Like, if um, I were Intel and all the kind of publicity that happened around that they weren't wrong they it just they still painted them in a bad light because of how okay. almost deceptive I, it I, felt I, um yeah. 2.8 gigahertz base sure 65 watts but why not give an estimated tdp when it's boosting so yeah. I, I did want to i mean uh, <sighs> make a correction because it's not the 10 9, uh, te just the 10 900 because the 10 900 was already i think announced uh this is this chip specifically is the 10 900 es um which stands extra spicy. Yeah, extra spicy. Well, so, <laughs> okay you'll yeah, yeah extra spicy it's and an engineering sample that's what es means it's the, not like a new skew i mean yeah however i mean it doesn't i don't know it's it's weird like they're yes i know i know it's an engineering Ooh. sample but regardless it's strange also the other thing i wanted to throw out there it's was to get the way that amd handles their tdp measurement is very different from the way intel calculates theirs um yeah amd's is based partly on the temperature it's weird i don't fully understand how they're doing it with ryzen to get like the lower temps or something Sorry, like, because they that? average, they get all the sides and they average it all out, and somehow it comes know. out lower or something. That's a different. Uh, I don't even no, know. That, that, that's like how. Okay, so as far as I understand, and I can be completely wrong, I think AMD's TDP is actually a measurement of heat, and Intel's is a measurement of power consumption. And then, with regards to what Frick's talking about, is the temperature sensor location, but that got fixed. With Ryzen, I think they either fixed two or Ryzen two. one. Well, the do keep in mind ones, mm -hmm. the old ones used to be edge die temperatures the yeah, new do, ones are not do keep in mind at uh, number one the new ryzen chips have multiple dies so that's something to consider uh but number two when it comes to any kind of solid state electronics 
power draw, as in like volts times amps from your power supply, turns into heat at like 100% efficiency. So watts in power consumption is equal to watts sure. in heat production. But AMD's TDP calculation takes into account like the efficiency of the um, IHS and... The yeah, there's of, like TKs involved. Like, you, God, you probably need to ask, ask uh, Thrax for a better explanation. Gamers Nexus happened. did a great explanation of it, and it was 20 minutes long. <laughs> so Yeah, I don't want to watch that right now. Typical <laughs> Gamers Nexus stuff, but it actually needed basically 20 minutes because AMD has changed it over time. Intel has changed it over time, but not that recently. Yeah, And there's a whole bunch of like, it depends whether you're using right. Ryzen or Rome or an Opteron or, and it's like, the, the TLDR of that entire video was basically like, you can compare them so long as it's like Ryzen 2600 to 2700, and don't even think about it with regards to power consumption. Yeah, like just, just do your within own a testing. Like, don't say, I'm going to buy a 95 watt heatsink and a 95 yeah, watt CPU. Oh, it'll work, but that's definitely not but the no, ideal. No, no, don't, no, don't do that. Just basically don't do it because. You're yeah, and I want to also yourself. throw out there with a 10900 yeah, it, 9K, gonna... the non unlocked. Uh, I'd say that the target for this CPU is probably OEMs anyway. So yeah. with the OEMs, you're going to need yeah. cheap yeah. out on the heatsink. So potentially that 65 watt TDP is probably accurate with how hot those things are going to be running. I'm not saying that's a great, great way to measure yeah. <coughs> the TDP, but it's a, I, I think it's a safe assumption that, you know, these that a lot of the OEM um, builders are just going to cheap out on that department, just get just enough to to function correctly. Yeah, so it's also oh, yeah. it's also worth noting um, a couple other things. Number one, all of the unlocked K CPUs have TDPs at 125 watts, which implies yes. they're supposed to boost more aggressively. Um, traditionally, Intel mainstream chips cap out at like 80, 90 watts, even the unlocked chips. I remember like Haswell was 84 watts, I mm -hmm. think, for a 4770K. And that was yes. the unlocked flagship on that platform. Uh, so I guess like as they've added more cores and have to save uh, ramped up clock speeds, well, you need a bigger power budget. So bigger TDP means better boosts. Um, and also, so the WCCF leak, it's not just the top tier i9s, it's the entire lineup. Um, everything is hyper threaded now. Uh, every tier, except for the Celerons, every tier adds two more cores. So you get dual core Pentium Golds, uh, quad core i3, hex core i5, uh, eight core i7, 10 core i9. Also, all of them have two megabytes of L3 cache per core, which is kind of new because Intel would uh, disable uh, Wait, part of the L3 to differentiate products. Say? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Two megs per core. Because it used to be like your uh, your i fives and I think uh, i sevens with Coffee Lake refresh, they right. only had one point five megs per core. So like Intel lasered off a bit of it because that hurts performance a tiny bit. It's not huge, but that indicates that you're getting the fully enabled die. Like they're not cutting out cache, they're not cutting out hyper threading. Right. Um, they might be cutting off cores. Uh, the rumors that I've seen suggest a ten core, six core, and a dual core die. Um, but I'm not actually sure on that. Yeah, I'm sure they'll do a quad core. But it's been the staple for years. Well, they're going to have quad core SKUs. They might not use a quad core silicon chip. Uh, they could also do one die for every two cores. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll be curious to see but, uh, um, what the thing looks like. I mean, based on uh, what they're saying uh, or what I've seen so far <laughs> about this new series of CPUs. I mean, it looks like it's going to be another j just big monolithic die and basically standard Intel stuff. So, I mean, yeah, it is. It, yeah. It's Skylake. <laughs> it's yeah, Grand Skylake. Another Sky thing Lake. I wanted to point out uh, is like with, with the i9 10900K, uh, the according to this WCCF chart, the base clock is 3.7 gigahertz versus the 2.8 gigahertz on the 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 ES. Yeah, hence the uh, the like sixty and higher, also, sixty watt higher there, TDP. Uh, something that I didn't hear about was the ten nine hundred T with the base clock, with the base clock. Of oh yeah, two dude, I love the thirty five watt chips and a thirty five watt TDP. 
Honestly, with an aggressive enough VF curve, I could totally see like three watts per core on uh, we are on Skylake. Under, hardware undervolting here. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean yeah. that's that's what they do. You bend the uh, see, you bend the opinion, uh, less like, leaky chips. That they don't clock as well, but that's the most a goal. interesting to me out of this entire lineup, just because it still has a four point five gigahertz uh, single core boost clock. So. Yeah. Well, keep in mind that's not that impressive. I mean, my friggin' tablet yeah, but, has but, like three point yeah, seven gigahertz. It's boost. not a full fat CPU either. <laughs> if I remember correctly, that's a mobile CPU. So. Uh, yes, but it's still t look. The point is, it goes fast Fair and enough. it's very low power. Also, it throttles in Factorio and goes down <laughs> to like one gigahertz playing games. Yeah. <laughs> but you know. Yeah, I actually really hope that, um, well, this ushers in some more cores on mobile SKUs. I am so sick of the two core, four thread yeah. mobile SKU. It's oh, cool. uh, it's pretty much four core, eight thread at this point. Like I5 and up anyway is quad also, core, some hex cores as well. No, but um, like, I want two core, four thread to die because my workplace refuses <laughs> to buy anything but two core, four thread. It yeah. is, Why? They're cheap. Um, they are <laughs> very cheap. Uh, when I when I started, I didn't get a single new peripheral. I got a secondhand headset, secondhand mouse, secondhand keyboard, secondhand laptop. Uh, oh secondhand sweat rack. Yeah, the grease. Night yeah. Lines, greens. Two core, four thread has its place, but it really doesn't have much of a place over fifty dollars. Like the Athlon three thousand G, that's fine. Some of these Pentium Golds, they're fine. Also, but I'm beyond really that, please no. <laughs> we're seeing standardized core counts for the different tiers of the CPUs. Yeah, I really like that. They're not differentiating with hyper-threading anymore. It's just cores, yeah. which is actually a lot like Ryzen, right? Ryzen 5 is like, six cores at this point. I uh, wish they'd do uh, the same with overclocking. Because can't you overclock any yep. Ryzen CPU no matter what? Yeah, uh, except for the 200 series Athlons. The 3000G is unlocked. Okay, I mean, that's well, yeah, yeah, good enough know, as but, almost any of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, in Ryzen's case, it's Ryzen the brand, not Zen the architecture. Um, yeah, I really don't like that Intel still sells the K chips as a premium, um, especially when it's like, I don't know, I guess now that hyperthreading's back on everything, it's better because like a four core eight thread i3 is not very good compared to a six mm. core six thread i5. Really? Actually, no, I think those were still... Uh, <laughs> Actually, in some cases, they'd outperform them. No, uh, i3s have been four core, four thread. They've been like the i5s of old. Um, God, it's dumb. I'm glad to see hyperthreading back. Like they they needed it. It's good for like real time uh, video encoding, for example. So if you're streaming, suddenly Intel's a better also, option again. I mean, I, I feel like they don't have a chance and, but to do that, seeing as AMD's got them on the core count right now. Yeah. Yeah, and here's the deal. Uh, hyperthreading doesn't really improve yields. Like it's just, it's such a small part of the die, and it's near such vital bits of the CPU that if hyperthreading legit doesn't work, the entire core probably doesn't work either, uh, as I understand it. Increase the uh, temperature. Yes, but that's because you're doing more work per second on each core, like. The uh, you generally get like what 20 to 30 percent depends on the application, but 20 to 30 percent more performance per second, or I guess more performance that takes time into account. Uh, if you're doing like 20 or 30 percent more work per second on a core, that core is going to run 20 to 30 percent hotter just because of the nature of how that works. Uh, that's really it, okay? Chris, <laughs> wow. you've spoken enough now. So well. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Alex. I thought this was a tech podcast. Yeah, but I, like we to have contribute. To Alex has a little bit of a bias here since he did mute you earlier. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right, Alex. Oh, uh, it was great. Yeah, it was Alex is a small child. Uh, uh, I, I don't know what you're complaining about. I, I, I approve of oh, his, uh, his, uh, his new off antics. <laughs> mm -hmm, me too. Now I don't know who you're talking about because I love. I made Chris angry. But yeah, but when he Chris gets angry, made me angry. Like, you could be talking about either each when other. You get when you get angry, it's what, because of Chris. Chris so it's fine. <laughs> yeah. What? Oh, yeah. That's me. I uh, anger you. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's let's hear some of Frick Frock's um, gluttonous voice. 
Oh, that's voice. <laughs> gobbling down these the new flavor of oh, planters no. nuts that they just announced. Uh, yeah. How about <laughs> let's not talk about nuts right now? Oh, the new. So, well, you wouldn't know, but yeah, planters announced a new brand of uh, cheese ball flavors. Anyway, why would I not know, Frick? Because, are you not in touch with the planters <laughs> cheese ball game? I'm in the planters cheese ball game. <laughs> I'm in the planters, the planters Illuminati. I'm in the I'm in the baby oh, God, baby no. nut camp is what I'm saying. Let's, let's not talk oh, about that. That's a really <laughs> bad name. <laughs> Please don't. Oh, anyway, this oh, podcast brought to you by oh. shameless corporate pandering. <laughs> <laughs> I like how we just say no because we're just preempting Chris to say something bad. It's okay. This was this was this didn't name anybody who can sue us. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I'm looking out for us. The bar is really low. Mm-hmm. Anyway, speaking of a very low bar. Nope. It's not even related, actually. So Apple has a malware problem. And apparently it's getting worse. No, uh, Macs don't get viruses. It's okay. true, they don't. No, 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 that no, article's no, no, done. No, no, no. Okay, We're next. About this. <laughs> so, apparently Macs aren't as safe as the general consensus is. Um, who was this? You've sent a different article now. Wasn't it McAfee that did this orig- originally? Uh, Malwarebytes, I think. Weird how the antivirus software seller would be talking about how you need antivirus, but go on. I think they're the only ones that yeah, can okay, really so collect the, the stats, report, The report maybe. was published by Malwarebytes. You did a big old switcheroo on me. I'm upset. Yep. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, it's just kind of the first paragraph is just kind of very um, demeaning, I guess, saying you only <laughs> thought Windows got viruses, think uh, again, Max get it. Anyway, according to cybersecurity software company, Malwarebytes, uh, the latest state of their malware report, the amount on malware or amount of malware on Max is outpacing PCs for the first time ever. And complacency, they say, could be your worst enemy. Thomas Reed, the director of Malwarebytes, Sorry, director of Mac and Mobile at Malwarebytes said people need to understand that they're not safe just because they're using a Mac. So, so See, not safe. Yeah. This this reads like half this is actually a horrible article. article yeah, so, this is more like uh, there's copy. a couple T- um, uh, the big TLDRs um, from 2018 to 2019. It was a 400 percent increase of threats reported to Malwarebytes. Uh, on Mac OS. Um, one of the big things that I did see, though, is uh, Malwarebytes also reported that the number of users who are actually installing the software on their Macs has also increased. So my running theory is the vulnerabilities have always been there. It's just the amount of reported vulnerabilities is now increasing. Oh, yeah. So this is like... Um, the- I also really question um, Mr. Reed. Uh, some of his, one of one of his, uh, bleh, some of his. I question Mr. Reed's advice here, who says, "Don't install Adobe Flash because fake Flash installers are one of the top methods for getting malware installed on a Mac." Or, no, in Chris. other words, Flash is going away this year. Like, it, th- this is just it's using Chris. common sense. Don't download random executables from the internet. I have a very interesting story that's very related to that, very oddly related to that. So All right. you say Flash is going away this year, and it's very obvious to you, me, probably Andrew Frick as well, that Flash will be deprecated after 2020. Don't use it, Yay. don't download it anymore, right? So I, I work in an IT company. Oh, no. <clears throat> you think that the people who have been working in said IT company in, let's say, a support role for maybe five years, maybe 10 years, right? Assisting people with issues like this would know what Flash is. No. Well, oh no! People who have no idea what Flash is, uh, like the fact that they uh, assist people with this. I had to stop someone from uh, going to the pirate bay to download Photoshop <laughs> when I told them to install Flash. They had it. They had it. Actually, I'll be different. honest. It took me a while to stop him because it's like one of those things you say, like, "Oh yeah, you know that website's not working because you didn't you didn't install Flash." He's like, oh, okay, let me download Flash. So he Googles Pirate Bay, and I'm just like, 
Okay. What? <laughs> no, I'm just, I just didn't. I'm just going to him. illegally download free. No, I, yeah, it's just like, okay, he clicks on it. It's like, okay. Clicks on, he types in Photoshop. It's like, well, I guess it's the same company. Oh my God. And just, he's like scrolling through. He's like, which one should I get? And I'm just like, no, <laughs> we're not doing this. Go back. Okay. One of those things, you're like, that's like Java or Shockwave. I don't even think anyone here remembers Shockwave, but Shockwave is uh, Yeah, Shockwave. dude. Hey, Good. remember uh, Flashpoint that we talked about a while ago? Uh, I downloaded it. It's a quarter of a terabyte. And uh, yeah, it's got like a Shockwave thing working on it. Yeah, it's um, a great program. It's really, really Blue Maxima. Yeah, vintage. Shout out to Blue Maxima. But the thing is, well, like at the time when Shockwave and Flash were around, everyone's like, oh, Shockwave's going to be the big thing. Shockwave's going to dominate everything. Because in terms uh, of what you could do with Shockwave, you could do a lot more with it. You could do 3D graphics. You could do um, a lot more advanced things that you couldn't do with Flash. And you could do better animation. What ended up happening was, I don't remember the exact reason uh, Flash got adopted over Shockwave. I think it had something to do with Newgrounds and how that sort of like launched. Aren't they both Adobe? I'm not sure. Uh, Shockwave yeah. is owned by Macromedia yeah, it's not, it's not at the time. I was gonna so say. Maybe they got absorbed. I know there was Macromedia Flash. Maybe they got absorbed, but, but at the time they were a different company. But no, yeah, when Shockwave rolled around, you know, it was like, oh my God, if you wanted to play a game, you went with Shockwave. If you wanted to right. watch something, you went with Flash. And then somewhere down the line, Flash just turned into this everyman thing where it was used for games and programs yeah. and everything you could imagine. Yeah, there's... um, <sighs> Yeah, vintage. Uh, yeah, no, and you can also, like, do a lot of things on the browser with any of those, like, Java plugins, Flash plugins, etc. Um, I oh, think Java. there's a lot of... um. There's just a lot of like really fraudulent sites. Uh, I was trying to figure out. So, you know, if you're in Windows Explorer and you press F1, it opens up Edge with a Bing search query for how to get help in File Explorer. Uh, I don't like that shortcut because it's next to F2 and I use F2 to rename files and folders. So I wanted to disable that. So I went to Google to figure out how to do this. And one of the first results was one of those like protectyourpc.com mm -hmm. kind of websites. Um, and it says how to remove helppane.exe. Helppane.exe is a malware infection commonly links to modifying registry entries, dropping adware, and changing browser settings on the target PC. Helppane.exe is detected as nasty PUP by most of the antivirus detection and can drop other threats onto the infected PC. This is a built-in part yeah. of Windows. Hmm. It... It, it it pops up the little help box and here's some idiot telling me to download the detection tool, which will find it, assuming it even actually honestly does that. Let's be honest. It probably just pops up. Your PC is infected by our things. Um, Chris, it, your PC is infected. You should buy our things. Hey. Oh, don't tell me what to do. Uh, they've got like screenshots from Windows XP. It's really great, but it's like this is where a lot of people are probably getting their malware. It's like those PC speed up apps. But you, you um, I guess I've got them for Max too. A while ago? It's, it's interesting you build it because there was this company called IOBit, which is the most popular for that, for like those speed up apps. I found out recently that back in the day were, and probably still to this day, a lot of people get their malware from like uh, Google ads, yeah. like Google YouTube ads, which is like, what? I can see it. That doesn't make sense. Usually, think Google is supposed to like look over all that stuff, but like people just no, like click don't. on random Google ads. And Are you kidding me? Videos. Google like removes as much human yeah. oversight as it possibly can. That yeah, is absolutely not something they do. No, no. When I submit it, I used to submit ads for anytime I do any like AdWords stuff or anything like that. Even if you do it on YouTube, you have to get it approved by a human person. That's one of the steps, and that means that those ads are being approved by you. It's not automated. It is not automated. I can tell you for a fact it isn't. But I just don't understand how that's slipping through the cracks. They probably glance yeah. at it and go, okay. Because yeah, right. it's probably something like they have to do X amount of hour or whatever. Like, you have not you know, oh, God, based yeah. based on this. They have horrible jobs. It's yeah. It, I don't think it's the person's fault. I mean, it probably is a bit to the person's fault, but they probably have no incentive to actually spend time and then check it. No. It's funny if you if you just search, uh, watch any Fortnite video, 
And I swear to God, you'll get ads for free V bucks all the time. Like V bucks this on the side, V bucks that on the side. Like, uh, dude, I got an ad once. I swear to God, for like play GTA Five for free, and it was a pop up ad on that, a video yeah. of Grand Theft Auto Five. Do you know what they probably do? This might be a bit unfair, but it's you know, just they sit on the approve button and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm done. I looked into that high APM. You might appreciate this. I looked into uh because you brought up Java. And the last thing I I can't remember the last time anyone's ever used Java. Alex, do they still use Java in like an enterprise enterprise system? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah? What uses it? Uh all I don't want to (laughs) say. I'm just gonna say everything that shouldn't use it does use it. The only thing um, I found about Java was that when I Googled it is that there was some lawsuit with Google and Java like 10 years ago, and it's coming to an end this week because apparently Google used Java's APIs in one of their Android operating systems, and they're suing the hell out of them for it. Um, so no, like a lot of stuff uses Java. Java. A, lo- a lot of monitoring software is used, used Java. A lot of, um, I suppose, cloud sort of integration stuff uses Java as well. Um, it's a lot more common than you think. It's just not very common or it's depreciatingly common in the consumer space. Even Minecraft moved away from Java, didn't they? They've got the uh, Windows 10 universal platform, but they're still actively supporting the uh, the Java Java. one's so much better. It's not that it's better, it's that it's got, you know, it's got every single mod in existence. Oh, you can't install mods on the other one. Uh, I think you can. It's just none of them are made for it. They're made for the Java edition because that's think, what uh, everybody used also originally. If you look at the Forge yeah. mod manager that is built exclusively for Java, if I remember correctly. And a lot of the mods these days are for Forge yep. based uh, Minecraft. So I do think that the uh, the Windows 10 version of Minecraft does mm-hmm. have a limited world size as well. I don't know what the limit is, but I'm pretty sure there is one. Whereas the Java what's, one... What's the advantage of it then? C++. Much, much better performance. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Xbox achievements. From, yeah, okay. Anyway, moving on from Malwarebytes and Java and Flash and all that nonsense. If um, Hey, hey, Alex, hang on, hang on. Mm-hmm. If you have eight malware bits, then you get mm, one no. malware byte. <laughs> Okay, so Samsung has launched a Galaxy S20. Um, obviously, being the year 2020, they couldn't do the S11. What? Because that would it's make just, sense. It's just like the iPhone thing where they skip oh. the iPhone 9. Dude, they're getting into like um, they're getting into those horrible AMD naming conventions where they oh were no. they made sense for a while and then they just went completely off the rails. I think Andrew mentioned this before. Um, it kind of makes sense why they'd also, an, a, an additional reasoning is they probably don't want to do S11 when the iPhone 11 is already out. You really think that matters? You think people are going to care? No, no, no. Yes. Okay. People, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I think people won't care. I think it wouldn't really affect sales, but I think Samsung thinks people care and thinks it would affect sales. I mean, yeah, if you're going in for the iPhone, you're not going to leave with the Android. And vice versa, for that matter. And if you I are, think most people just go into their cell phone store and just say, I want the newest Android phone, which it is, or the newest Samsung. They just get it. A lot of people think Samsung equals Android. So, Alex, let's talk about the yes. camera here. Now, I understand that this has a 100x zoom and a uh, 0.1 gigapixel camera. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is an interesting way to put it. And yes. you are correct. So, <laughs> Samsung the S, uh, has three SKUs, if you will, if you want to call them SKUs. We have the S20 Ultra, we have the S20 Plus with a little plus sign, and then of course we have the S20. So the S20 Ultra is like the plus, but faster, has all the camera modules. Um, S20 Plus is big and has less camera modules, S20 is the base one. So the cameras that you're referring to, the S20 Ultra stated has a 108 megapixel camera and 100 times zoom on that. And they're not wrong. It does have a 108 megapixel camera and it kind of does have a 100 times zoom. So what it's doing is it has four times optical zoom, which is, yes, obviously more than the iPhone has at 2x and more than the Google uh, Pixel has at 2x. 
But how to get that 100 times zoom is it's using the 108 megapixel and then kind of like downsampling it, so if you it's will. it's just digital zoom. Oh, pff. okay. So, you, so imagine if you take a 10,000 pixel picture and then zoom into a thousand pixels of that. That's kind of what it's doing and saying it's 10 times that scenario, right? That's what it's doing and then applying the four times on top of it. Ooh, So yes, wowee. it's digital zoom, but it's not. Yeah, it's not interpolation. It's kind of cropping in a weird way. I don't know. Um, another thing that's kind of a bit shady about it, the wide angle lens or the ultra wide angle lens is 79 degrees, which is no, um, not really that not. wide. Let's be honest. Uh, the pixel pitch of the 108 megapixel camera is quite low, so expect noisy and very bad low light performance. How is that but, possible in this this day and age? Like how? Uh, because optics. Like and here's the deal: cameras cameras are not limited, or I mean, they are to some degree, but like digital cameras aren't really limited by the semiconductor. You know, the the actual CCD sensor. They're limited by optics. Like, you need real glass if you're going to get a good picture. Like, a phone can never match up an equivalent DSLR. Unless it no, has a DSLR. It but it's uh, it doesn't. Well, sensor size what? is way more important than the lens they're using, because sensor size defines how much light it can actually get. No. Well, no. Yeah, but no. <laughs> yes, but no. no. <laughs> okay, an example, right? I have a 2008 Nikon something or another. It has a, is it three or four megapixel sensor? Not great, but it takes a million times better pictures pictures than my iPhone 11. No, 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 no. You're talking about the resolution, and the sensor and resolutions are two different things. Is it a full frame or a crop sensor? It's a phone. Oh, you said, what did you say, Nikon? Yes, I said oh. my Nikon takes way better oh, pictures than my iPhone oh, 11. Oh, I thought you were talking about it. Okay, I go hope on. so. <laughs> Frick. Frick, did you confuse yourself? No, I thought you said, I thought you said my Nikon. As yes. in N I K O N. Yes. Yeah, Nikon, Wait, as you people but might then say. You said phone. No, I he's comparing an Nikon camera. Are we talking about a camera? Or are we talking about a phone? What I'm saying is, a thing with a much worse, like megapixels, takes a much better picture than my phone oh, with much yes. higher megapixels. Yeah, which is okay. why I'm saying this 108 megapixel thing is. Okay, you 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 are right about that. So one of the best cameras for low light right now is called the Sony A7S II, right? It can literally see in moonlight. Like you shoot that thing in moonlight, and it can see really, really well. Here's the thing, though: um, the top of the line Sony, you know, it's about 24, 42 megapixels or so. The A7S, however, uh, shoots all of its videos. I think in, I don't know, it doesn't use the full sensor, that's for sure. But it's only got like a 12, 14 millimeter uh, megapixel sensor, despite being a full frame camera. So it's not only that a bigger sensor doesn't necessarily mean it'll be better for uh, like everything. It'll be better for like uh, dynamic range and shadow detail and all that other stuff. But the thing is with a medium format camera, which has the biggest sensor out of anything, you by that logic, you would think, oh, it's going to have the best low light. It actually has the worst low light um, because it's so sharp. There's so many megapixels that are so densely packed together that even the smallest amount of Pixel noise pitch. seem really bad. Yeah, yes, it's almost like you should so do multi-sampling and average out the, the the noise. Yes, so that's kind of what I was getting at. The pixel pitch of that said camera is really small, so you're going to have really bad low light and not that great clarity when you zoom in that far. Anyway, moving on from the cameras, um, which, by the way, there are... It depends on who you want to listen to, but there's three to four. Um or four to five actually it just it looks like a vhs tape on its side on the back of it it is hideous i'm sorry look it's anyway there will be a picture on the yeah thumbnail. betamax was better anyway <laughs> so um <laughs> it's yeah so the phone's all gonna have a 3200 by 1440 display uh, the stop minimum, these aspect ratios it's 20 by 9 that's actually the standard so no, 21 to 9 is a so standard ultra wide. I've anyway. seen 19.5 to 9. I've seen 18 to 9. It's all over the place. I hate it. Anyway, anyway the smallest S20 you can get is 6.2 inches, uh, the screen, which is quite big, to be honest. The are coming back, um, baby. The S20 Ultra, 
the S20 Ultra is 6.9 nice. inches, which is 0.3 inches away nice. from a tablet. Um, it uses the Samsung AMOLED uh, HDR10 plus 1200 nits, blah, 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 blah. Uh, one of the big advertising things is that it's got a 120 hertz panel. It does so long as you put it in 1080p mode. And that's kind of important to note. Um, it weighs a lot. It's got between 8 and 16 gigs of RAM, big battery. It's kind of Android specs, you know, the fastest, the latest, the greatest stuff with regards to specs. They all have 5G. So um, if you're in Sweden, don't get one. <laughs> it has USB C or USB Type C, no, point, no 3.5 mil, obviously. Uses a nano SIM, no SD card. Is that has that finally uh, attached mainstream success with USB C, or is it still pretty niche? Uh, USB C is pretty common. It's on uh, cheapo smartphones now. <laughs> oh, what okay. I do want to note is um, you only get two options for storage: 128 gig internal or 512 okay gig internal. And the starting price, the absolute minimum price for the S20, uh, is a thousand US dollars. Or a thousand pounds, or a thousand euros. Wait, no, that no, that's that doesn't. No, it can't be a thousand pounds and a thousand dollars. Sorry, nine hundred pounds. There you go. Yeah. Lots of nine. Um, the maximum it goes up to for the S twenty Ultra five twelve gig is one thousand five hundred dollars, one thousand five hundred fifty euros, or one thousand oh, four hundred pounds. No, at that point. Dude, you might as well just get the Galaxy Flip phone, which is two grand. Like, just go uh, for that. Don't get, the, don't get the fold phone. Don't. F no. Foldable phones are bad. There's a seam in the middle. They're all going to. I don't like them. What? Have you seen it's any cheaper. of the new foldable phones? They don't have a seam in the middle anymore. That's yes, they do. Yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do, Rick. It literally no, says not. on Samsung's website, I looked at it, hey, there's a seam in the middle, a visible what? seam. Like You're looking at old tech. You're looking at the old I'm looking tech. at the brand new one, you idiot. Look at the oh, Motorola. Dude. The new Huawei phone does not have any seam. What are you talking about? Okay, hang on. We're going to the Samsung Galaxy phone. Fold. No, Sorry. We're just talking about foldable ones now. We're just, you, you said you didn't say Samsung he did. foldable. He, he you said phones. I, I did. I explicitly said Samsung Galaxy Fold, as in the you new did one. Not say fold. You know, you said all. Okay. Frick! I am going to drive to Chicago, and I'm going to stab you in the face. Not all foldable phones have seams anymore. Let's just dispel <laughs> that myth for once and for all. Samsung advertises that it might because they don't want to get yelled at. You may hey, notice a crease at the that. center of. Th uh, Frick! Uh, damn it! You, you may notice a. Way, Samsung the Fit phones are horrible. They're trash. You can get a way better one. Yeah, the point is they make they're they're making them, and this is the one that I saw the other day. You may notice a crease at the center of the main screen, which is main screen, which is a natural characteristic of the screen. I, I, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so glad I'm not so everybody off today. <laughs> I'm gonna fight somebody. <laughs> Here's I, I got something for you. Let, let, do you. Do you guys know what the top selling mobile phone of all time is? iPhone. Uh, that iPhone, one Nokia phone. The 10R. The 10R. It's the well. Okay. Well, the top selling Nokia phone is the Wait. Nokia 1100, right? Of all time. You, you you said the top selling phone, Frick. It is. The top selling phones are all oh. Nokias. <laughs> Frick, is Over. this like www dot? Totally accurate facts, not a virus from <laughs> malwarebytes.com no, forward slash really, Mac install. Out of, out of like the top 10 top selling mobile phones of all time, like it, nine out of 10 of them are Nokia's. Okay, let's look at top selling smartphones. It's on Wikipedia. Uh, Alex, we're not talking about smartphones, we're talking yeah. about cellular Just telephones. Phones. Just phone. And you know, it's sold. So the Nokia 1100, top selling phone of all time, 250 million, right? The second best selling phone of all time. A Nokia uh, 1110 with uh, yeah. 250 again, but here's the crazy thing: third best, third best selling phone of all time, iPhone 6, 224 yeah. million. I have an iPhone 6. It's Android insane. iPhone 6. They couldn't even come close to Nokia. They just get, how was a company? What do you that, mean they couldn't even come close? 222 versus close. 250. 25 million off. Trash. Okay, okay, frick, frick. I'm gonna just go full whatever. Look at where the next Samsung smartphone is. E1100? That's not a smartphone. 
But I thought you I was, went on the list. I yeah, I'm on the list, and when it says <laughs> touchscreen, that means smartphone. Oh, all touchscreens are smartphones, huh? No, but a smartphone will be touchscreen. Okay. Hey, uh, Alan. <laughs> My, my Samsung, yeah, my, my Samsung Behold wasn't a smartphone, but go on. Hey, Alex, you might no, it's I, not, Frick. Uh, apparently, the Game Boy topic away from phones, please. <laughs> it's the Game Boy. Oh, actually, oh, fun oh. fact, fun oh, fact. The Game oh. Boy had a uh, cell network adapter. It was okay. only released in Japan, but you could get your Game Boy on a cellular network. Just before Sounds you change topic a, from a, phones. It's not fishing device adapter. Okay, just before you change topics from phones, one thing I will say about this crazy drive towards phones that are very expensive and overkill. What's nice is now the mid-range phones yeah. are actually really worth getting. Like the iPhone 11, the Samsung J somethings, I don't know. Is an iPhone 11 mid-range now? Jesus Christ. For nice. Apple, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, fair. Uh, right. I don't like it. Go on, Simmons. Uh, no, Chris, you I don't like anything. Yeah, you're right, Alex. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cr Frick Simmons. Just go on. Just go on. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch back to uh, PC hardware for a moment. Uh, so, thank you. Yeah, you so uh, this next article was covered by Gamers Nexus. Um, so Fantex blatantly ripped off uh, Leanne Lee's O11 Dynamic. This podcast brought yep. to you by neither of those companies. <laughs> so, so Fantex has a smaller case manufacturer that they own known as Metallic Gear. Um, it is oh, basically yes, Fantex's brand. knockoff Fantex brand. <laughs> ah, so, so it's the thermal take thermal of take. Fantex. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, the difference is that thermal take is very on the open with their primary brand. This is basically a subsidiary. Um, so Metallic Gear announced their new Neo Cube case. Cube spelled Q U V E. Um, it, oh, God. of course it is. Did they think yes. that was uh -huh. niche and funny? Um, you, I like my favorite. Basically, cube is the it looks beat. like a knockoff or just like a cheap knockoff of the O11 Dynamic. It is a cube case, dual chamber, and it looks. Well, from what I'm seeing, there's a few nuances in terms of like maybe front IO is a little bit different. Uh, but no, it looks near identical to the case that's sitting next to my desk right now. Um, it hundred bucks. The cheapest is a hundred bucks. Yeah, I mean the the dynamic is I wonder I, or the O11 dynamic. I think is roughly the same price. So uh, basically, this cube is featuring a full. Tempered front panel, a full tempered side panel uh, for the main compartment, uh, side mount fans, and a very large grill in the back for exhaust fans. It is basically exactly the same thing as the O11 Dynamic, and it's not even the same, or it's not even cheaper. It's basically cheaper. the exact same thing uh, with a few minor tweaks. Um, yeah, like they've got kind of their styling on the grills and some different RGB -ness 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 on it. No, I mean, the biggest difference, and I'm, and I'm just comparing this photo to um, I, I, my personal PC case is an O11 Air, the, uh, basically the, the mesh front panel version of the Dynamic. Um, Your PC also has a 1900X, yeah. which is bad. But the, but the, but the oh, biggest difference that I'm seeing is a different power button. A few, uh, it looks like slightly different... Uh, front panel buttons, but it's basically from... the exact same thing. Um, I feel like there might be a lawsuit soon in terms of how how closely designed this thing is. Like a lot of computer cases, there's uh, there's minor variance yeah. between what a lot of cases can look like these days. But come on, this is this is pretty pathetic in terms. Well, I mean, just because it's a rectangular box doesn't mean they all have to look identical. I mean, you can very clearly see that. And the more gamery you get, the more like out there yeah. styles but you can like, have. A lot of um, these case manufacturers, they, they go out of their it, way to obvious. make their case stand out in uh, some form or another, right? So yeah. with, with like yeah. Corsair or Fractal Design, you can look at it and it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see the clear differences. If I were to put the O11 Dynamic and this case next to each other, I would... I would quite frankly say that they were made by the same company. Uh, this is this is great. Actually, on the Metal Gear site, it does say powered by Fantex, so they're not even really trying to hide 
that Fantex owns them. <laughs> Oh, I yeah, was gonna say yeah, if they you're do somebody, you, like, don't you think Case Labs would have sued the hell out of Thermal Take if they could? Because if you want to talk I, blatant, it doesn't get more blatant than that. I don't even know like what you could sue them over. Like, is that actually legal or illegal? I suppose. Like, I don't know. Well, I mean, um, even, even if there wasn't like a lawsuit per se, um, there should be. I I feel like this topic definitely needs uh, to be covered more by more people because this is quite frankly absurd. <laughs> yeah, it's ouch. Yeah, you can kind of tell. I mean, just from that, the with the uh, fans that go on the front to the like right hand side that go, you know, parallel. Is it parallel? No, it's the one that's T intersect. But basically, you know, we yeah. And that's a very O11 dynamic thing. Like no other cases. And here's the thing: is if they wanted to, if they wanted to go for that kind of design, because quite frankly, I think that design is innovative and it shouldn't necessarily be restricted to Lee and Lee alone. I feel. I hope more case manufacturers go that direction. Yeah, I would like to see some variance. You know, something that makes this. uh, This looks like the old uh, dual chamber design, doesn't it? it? Oh, this one's dual system. Okay, I missed that. It's so, a dual system so uh, case. It would be more closely related to the 11 XL, if I remember. If, if yeah, it's yeah. yeah. I just I just noticed that it was dual system. Uh, that's but nifty. I regardless. like that a lot. I mean, uh, big fan. It's just come on, guys. This is stupid. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's one thing for taking a formula which someone else has, you know, created and done successful and doing your own thing. And there's another thing for Mm -hmm. just copying their formula. I can. Which is upsetting because I quite liked Fantex's stuff. I do have one of their cases, albeit um, I can't shovel my hardware. What I'm curious to see is or what I'm curious to know is. how much oversight Fantex has over Metallic Gear, because Metallic Gear is just quite frankly a separate entity that is just so happens to be owned by Fantex and uses the Fantex branding, then fine. But you feel like there'd be some sort of vetting to say, hey guys, you probably shouldn't do that. (laughs) Yeah, or just some sort of responsibility or accountability on Fantex behalf of what they put out. With how similar it is, I wouldn't be surprised if they just got the same, like doing it with the same tooling. Because a lot of these companies. Well, oh, think, gosh, oh, it's all like wow. from the same OEM. Yeah, no, a lot of it is. And they Backward. just kind of went and said, like, hey, you know the tooling you're doing for the O11 dynamic? Yeah, just we want the same thing, but uh, here and here and here, change these. Okay, cool. See, that happened a lot. Anytime you get like replica clothes, like for example, in the replica shoe market, the replica sneaker market, that happens all the time. They'll go to the same faculty or facility that Nike gets all their stuff made and they'll do like a backdoor deal. Like, hey, look, when you guys aren't working on these Nike shoes, uh, these other vendors will come in and be like, hey, I'll pay you this much to make mm-hmm. the same thing. And they're like, okay, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's not great. But uh, what can you do about mode. it? Uh, lawsuits. Yeah. Who China? Who <laughs> China? Well, I mean, they're already kind of dealing country. with problems right now. I, I feel like I feel like China is fine. So, what 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 uh, names have you heard for the Wu flu? Uh, the Kung flu. The... Have you heard the Y flu? Oh, oh. oh God! <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Moving on. Shut, no, we're done. We're hey, done. Chris, take this next one. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, what's this next one? Chris, uh, no right. ZD, okay, for, it's the purple one. The next one, the oh. the UK, the UK, the weather computer. It, yeah, what? it's a supercomputer. Talk about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm just making sure because you said the next one and then you highlighted a different next one. Uh, okay. Uh, UK is spending, as in the United Kingdom, aka as opposed Britain, to. Britain land um, uh, is spending one point six billion dollars to build the world's fastest weather supercomputer. Um, it will be managed by the Met Office. I don't know who those people are to more accurately predict storms, pinpoint suitable locations for flood defenses and predict changes to global climate. Specifically, airports will be able to use it to plan for potential disruption and power companies could rely on data to help protect against potential energy blackouts and surges. 
Okay, sorry. I thought I had a sneeze going on. Um, yeah, that's very exciting. One t- one point two billion squids uh, of your tax dollars. If you're one of those uh, limey uh, royalists. <laughs> um, <laughs> So 1.2 billion squids uh, funding it. Um, Installation will take place over a 10-year period starting in 2022. Uh, It doesn't really give any specifications about it. Just it's going to be very big. And the first phase alone is expected to complete. Oh, Met Office, like meteorology office. I gotcha. Uh, It's expected to increase like the entire agency's compute capacity by a factor of six. So... It's going to be a very big upgrade, which is very important for uh, predicting storms. Um, Actually, if I remember correctly, um, the National Weather Service in the U.S. uh, has had like enough funding cuts that um, we're like lagging behind several weeks or not several weeks, but several days uh, when it comes to like big storm predictions. So like during hurricane seasons, um, we aren't able to predict as far in advance as say like some countries in the European Union mm-hmm. that are tracking these for us. So, you know, that, that, that's not really good. Um, that's just like a public safety thing, thing, really. Computer. So it says the first stage installation will go in service in 2022. Like, he, like Chris said, it'll be uh, six times more capable than the current Cray XC40 system. But in five years, they're intending to upgrade it. That'll bump the performance a further three times. So that's pretty fascinating. I know this is pedantic, but the three times three time the original, from, three so, times so, from no, the no. the results. Uh, three times from the new installation. So they're saying nearly 20 times more powerful. It's going to be closer to 18% nice. because math, but regardless, <laughs> or 18 times, but yeah, neat. Supercomputers are cool. That's nice. So, <clears throat> Chris. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that is you. That's uh, me. Should we talk about the Danes? Uh, what about those people? I hear there's something rotten in their country. What are what are you what are you referring oh, wow. to, Chris? Oh, wait, wait, hang on, wait, wait. Are we going to? Uh, <laughs> are that's all Shakespeare about? quote. Um. Ah, okay. What's going on in uh in in Danish land. <laughs> Denmark, you idiot. <laughs> I know what I said. Oh, God. Danish tax portal accidentally shares taxpayer identification numbers with Google and nice. Adobe Analytics services. Oh, That's not good. Analytics. Actually, this comes on the tail. Uh, Israel's election authority apparently like accidentally leaked everybody's voter <laughs> registration information. Um it's not been very good recently for governments and uh, cybersecurity. <laughs> you, you think you think that these organizations, you know, the prime target organizations holding all of these citizens' personal information that can be very detrimental to these individuals, you think they would do due diligence to ensure something like this didn't happen? But no, 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 no. Oh, it's, I, it's, it's fine. We'll fix it when it breaks. I, I don't know yeah. if you're if you're aware of this, uh, Simmons, but some of the most some of the most outdated and uh, lackadaisical employees of all time Trust happen me, to work I in know. government offices. <laughs> 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 Quite a few. I don't know if you've been down to the DMV lately, but they still use Windows oh, 98. Man. Where I'm from. Yeah. Wait, well, do they? Yeah. Am I? Yeah, I got my there? driver's you know test scheduled see, through see, nepotism, see, incidentally. That's what's funny because <laughs> when I was just last in the West Virginia DMV. They were at least on Vista. Mountain Mama? Oh. Nice. That's the best Windows version. <laughs> oh, Isn't it, Frick? At least it was released in the last 20 years. I mean, technically so was XP. XP was no, 2001, no, wasn't it? 1999. No, XP was... No, it wasn't. Wasn't it? No. no, no. Was this? Oh, it was 2001. Uh, retail October 2001. OEM August 2001. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, XP is from this millennium. Was 1998? No. Was 1999 and 1998? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're thinking Windows Millennium Edition, which yeah, was Windows, worse Windows than Vista somehow. Yeah, Windows Emmy was the worst flavor of Windows <laughs> ever. 
a sourest. They made a big upgrade in a very short amount of time. Because a lot of you know, my favorite thing about Windows ME is nobody wants to remember it, so not many people do, and there's a good reason for it. Dreamcast used it. That's I, the only we, thing I knew. We had for. a Windows ME computer, and the moment we upgraded to a Windows XP computer, we shut that thing off and we never used it again. That thing was a mess. <laughs> What was I had that, a computer with Windows Millennium Edition. System? What was and the every one time I plugged right in my headphones? Uh, uh, ah, Microsoft Flight. You're talking about <laughs> <a break. laughs> I didn't hear you. Yeah, go on. Yes. That's my oh, trick. Very rude. <laughs> oh, my God. I've... I didn't hear you. <laughs> oh, what was going on now? Uh, but, yeah, I did have uh, a computer with Windows Millennium Edition, and every time I plugged in <laughs> headphones, it was blue screen. <laughs> Hey, I'm just going to say something totally unrelated. Apparently, I named a folder Factorio Candy <laughs> just now. Oh. I don't know, okay. but I'm blaming Frick. Frick. Now, what oh, were you going to no. say? <laughs> there, was a, there was an operating system that Microsoft released that they just never... It was said to be one of the worst things ever. And I think it was... I don't know if it was exactly... Uh, ME, it might have been ME, but it was one that they released only on like, um, what do they call it? You know those little billboards that you see like at the mall or like when you're driving down the highway or something like that? It was the operating system mostly used for those. Yeah. Uh, I'll see if I can find okay. it. You guys know what I'm talking about? It, 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 it was like, you remember the name like, for that? Uh, the, yeah, it's like yeah. POS system type stuff. And they but used it, on like um, yep. ATMs and things. Yeah, it was basically like everywhere that when, you know, using those types of things started getting bigger, any sort of touchscreen operations they were used on that. I can't remember. It might have been an offshoot of ME or XP. I'm pretty sure it was XP. But it wasn't just like ME XP. was... I, you know what? I've never seen an ME used anywhere aside from personal computers or office computers. And for mm. good reason. XP has been around forever and still continues to function in many businesses because it works. I'll be... <laughs> okay. Apparently the nickname for ME well, is Windows Mistake yeah. Edition. Yeah. I did not know. <laughs> IRL. Oh, yeah. Windows Embedded POS Ready. That's what that you said. I'm pretty sure that, that was it. Embedded. Okay. Yeah, it do uh, that. That thing oh, is totally awful. Huh. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, well, no, it's still support until the end of 2019. 2019. Yeah, because, like, most, but obviously, because a lot of the old passed, ATMs so that were running, not... like, that, that people were freaking out about were, were just straight up using XP, like, standard Windows XP. <laughs> Nib. What? Is, oh, that's something else. Yeah, that is something else. Anyway. I forgot what we were talking about with the Danes. Uh, they leaked something. ID numbers. Big oops. Uh, basically, if you live in Denmark, yes. uh, you should probably already know about this. Please uh, get angry at your government. Get mad. <laughs> You've got to get mad. They make pretty good pastries, though. Ask them for free Lego bricks. No, we can't even be mad because in America, we got that massive hack that got done for the experience. Did it twice? Oh, Equifax? Yeah, no. With the... So, uh, yeah, yeah, Equifax and all that stuff. Every single was it? Um, well, here's the thing that sucks. We have like three different credit reporting agencies in the U.S., Alex. And if one of them gets compromised, they pretty much all do because yep. they all have the same info, which is 300 million Americans like social security numbers and credit mm -hmm. yeah. history and all that oh, stuff. Oh, it's tasty. <laughs> yeah, and that happened. Oh, and you know, you know what they did? So I got that call. You know, they said, oh, you know, you might have been compromised or something like that. The second that happened, they were like, we can offer you uh, this protection service. I'm like, okay, you're going to offer me a protection service from the, from the organization yeah. that couldn't protect it in the first place. And then like, yes, it's only $35 a year. I'm like, you, okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, and then they, I think they gave it to everyone for free. But, you know, did you sign up, uh, Simmons, to uh, as part of the lawsuit to get, like, a bunch of um, money, like 300 bucks? Surprisingly enough, um, because I, I, we, I, did some, I did some checks to see if, if my data was compromised. I was somehow not affected by it. I don't know how. Oh, look at that. But, uh, Congratulations. But I still do get emails whenever Yahoo is compromised because that one's always funny. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, Yahoo. Uh, I mean, this is this one's not in our doc, but uh, Yahoo uh, apparently had a big compromise. Uh, I think last year, and I just recently received an email. By the way, you're eligible for um, for some compensation. You can either get a year of free credit monitoring or a thirty dollar payout. <laughs> Wow, credit monitoring. Thanks, guys. Yep, so I you got, monitor I got this. I for the $30 oh, okay. payout because I am <laughs> FMRT. You got to get it. Yeah. Speaking of Money SMLT. over everything. Yes. What? No. Moe. Wait. No, we're not talking about yeah, Moe. Shut up. Moe over <laughs> everything. We're not talking about Moe. Anyway, uh, speaking of SMRT, have you heard about Mad Mike? No, we're not talking about that. We have one more thing. Yeah, 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 yeah no. The I do want to talk Simmons Sorry. wants to talk about it. We're talking about tech. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's not even me. Okay, so uh, article from Anon Tech titled, What's TLC is SLC again? MemX Pro introduces PC32 full drive pseudo SLC SSDs. So back in the good old days of NAND Flash, when it first came to market, um, I mean, they didn't even call it SLC. It was just flash. So every single flash cell had, it was able to store data as one of two voltage states. It was either a high state or it was a low state. And that, that was easy enough. High state's a one, low state's a zero. Maybe it's vice versa. Doesn't really matter, but two states makes one bit. But then later, manufacturers realized, well, we can make our flash more dense, can't we? So they introduced two more voltage states. They had a high state, a not so high state, a medium state, and a low state. And that gets you four bits per or two bits per cell from the four states. Uh, and then TLC happened. You have eight voltage states and you get three bits out of that. QLC happened. You get 16 voltage states, four bits and so on. And like penta level cell, five bits, 32 states. That's being uh, researched, but it hasn't come to mass market yet. Uh, but the thing is, as higher and higher... Um, cell densities have come to market the less lucrative like slc and even mlc now have started to fade away but they have major advantages partly due to speed and partly due to durability because it's rather tricky to i mean effectively it's analog storage um it <sighs> yeah i mean it, it is analog storage like i'm going to call flash analog storage so you, you need to have like you have less durability because you need to be able to distinguish these states better. And if you're working in certain data center type workloads and you're just thrashing a flash SSD like day after day after day after day, you're doing like multiple drive writes a day, you know, that kind of starts to hurt you. So SLC chips aren't really available, but TLC is um, TLC being the three layer flash and you know, every new TLC SSD these days comes with a pseudo SLC flash. So even though the flash cells can support eight voltage states, they only use two. So it behaves like SLC, even though it is not designed to be used as TLC. And therefore, MemX Pro is filling a niche in the market by making these pseudo SLC drives. They're using exclusively TLC chips in SLC mode. Um, they are selling... Drives are ranging in capacity from 80 gigabyte to 320 gigabytes, which is equivalent to, if they were using the full TLC, 240 to 960 gigabytes. Um, you're not buying these for capacity, of course. You're buying them for uh, yeah, the longevity, the the durability, and like the advantages of PL of uh, TL or bleh, of SLC. Um, they're not as durable as dedicated SLC, but they do get quite close. It's like MLC, EMLC uh, kind of levels. But it's really cool. We've actually kind of seen... Um, what is it? Um, Simmons, I feel like I've, I've talked at you about this. It's uh, Samsung yeah. Xenand, I think. Um, it's yeah. like... Yeah, it's like a revival of SLC Flash. Um, apparently, you can pick it up. It's like a 240 gig drive for 300 bucks. And it's SLC. Um, it's like competing with Optane, that kind of like high performance, persistent storage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like Xenand is but, uh, is just SLC essentially. So, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it's a really interesting concept. Um, and the fact that it's using commodity TLC hopefully well, I, brings prices down a bit because I feel like this is a good way to, I, I, to because since TLC is kind of the the hip chip, so to speak, um, this is just a good way to bring durability out of what is already a very popularly manufactured uh, piece of technology. So, so, ba- right. so it's it's probably super cheap to implement something like this. It's probably just something on the controller that needs to be changed itself. And if it's just a mod, yeah, yeah, and it's like. Remember, all of these controllers natively support pseudo SLC, uh, pseudo SLC flash caches. I mean, like the Samsung 840 Evo, literally the second TLC drive on the market, right. had pseudo SLC flash. The 840 didn't, but uh, it's been there since almost the very beginning. So it is not difficult at all to implement this. I don't believe this would just be the whole drive yeah. is the SLC and cache. I, I, I honestly think this is just this is it's fascinating and i think it's just a good way to pump out something durable with uh like i said something that's already mass market so uh this is cool i look forward to seeing how durable these things actually are i want to see one of those um oh who is the organization that did uh the uh the yeah tech report tech report did the uh let's yeah, murder our I ssds I would benchmark like to see something uh performed again with what what's currently on the market just Oh, gosh, yeah. Actually, let's take a look. Hang on. Uh, Tech Report, SSD, Endurance, because if I recall correctly, that started in 2013. Uh, Yeah, that started August 2013. That was ages ago. They were still... Kingston HyperX, that's like classic Sandforce controller. Um, OG Samsung 840 as well. That That was uh, first TLC drive. That is what led me to purchasing my first SSD, which was one of those uh, HyperX SSDs. but I could, but yeah, yeah, they ended up doing oh. like uh, I think the 840 Pro was uh, the drive that ended up lasting the longest, and I think that one did like 1.6 petabytes of read and write before it eventually died. Was it not? Uh, uh, the did pretty good in general, right? For long term usage. Sorry, say that again, Frick. All I most even the crappiest SSD is going to be pretty decent when it comes to like. Any oh sort yeah, of the, stuff. the durability of the flash is not a concern at all. If you're dealing with QLC and very write heavy applications, eh, I'd avoid that. But like even current gen TLC, it's fine. It, it's fine. It works great. Yeah, I think um, the big thing which prompted a test like that is back when the SSDs first hit the market, um, people were concerned about the longevity of the. You got to turn off your page file. <laughs> oh, God. oh, then yeah. Yeah. fragmented yeah, well, it'll blow up. Well, I mean, because well, the, yeah, that is true. You shouldn't do that. The SSDs but. is if a hard drive, like a spinning rust hard drive, fails, uh, you can still send it off, and it's fairly, or depending on why it fails, you can get the data off of it pretty easily. It's normally like a platter swap or something along yeah. those lines. When an SSD dies, it's gone, unless. Uh, yeah, good old uh, secure erase. It encrypts the data. It keeps the key. If you do secure erase, that key goes poof, and all of your data is right. encrypted and inaccessible. So, you ain't going to get to it. Also, the way yeah. SSD fails is often like just solid state electronics where so, they just go burst into flames. Um, I have had a controller fail. I don't think I've ever had the flash fail. Like the flash is fine. It's really like controller and over time, and this is exacerbated in heat, uh, the, flash tra- the flash cells can use, uh, lose their charge looked into one of those older brands like OCZ. Did you guys know they're still selling SSDs? Like they got bought name? out and they're now a subsidiary of is it Toshiba? I it's guess Toshiba's a uh, Kyoxia now. I put the link in. They got they, actually their stuff's not bad. I mean, considering what they're offering, 5-year warranties on a lot of their stuff. So. Decent. Yeah. Yeah. Speeds are good. Read and write speeds are decent. I mean, it's yeah. not trash at all. I mean, if I remember correctly, OCZ only got an um, only got the reputation that they got not because OCZ was bad, but because the controllers they were using, which everybody was using, because Sandforce was uh, it was SATA six gigabit per second, and it actually hit the six gigabit per second in very yeah. very select few workloads. But they could put that on the box. Um, and there were some firmware issues where they would just spontaneously die. <laughs> that was that was a bit of a problem. Yes, it was. Now they're gone, and it's yeah. 
bad. Oh, they're live. Oh, hey, it's in, just well, a sticker. It's not really the same board. people. They do not exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it does, sadly. Uh, that was like DDR2 times as well, when they had good RAM. When RAM was good. I mean, to be fair, like, it's not really OCZ's RAM, it's like SK Hynix or Samsung or whoever else. Chris, just shut up. Look, if you don't make the chips, it's hard to call you. I guess Fantex don't make their own cases. Fantex literally manufactures the metal box. Like, okay. that's different than fabbing a chip or buying a chip that somebody else fabbed. It's if if Fantex is like buying cases from some third party, slapping their logo on it and selling it to you, then no, a Fantex does not make their own case. <laughs> cool. So have you heard about Mad Mike? Oh, yes. Mike. Rest in peace. God bless you, Mad Mike. He proved the earth was flat. <laughs> oh, he, he sacrificed himself for our sins. Awesome. Our sin. What? Awesome. What? Yeah, <laughs> our sin. That's a cool crime. Our sin. <laughs> He's sacrificing enough for our wow. sin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get now. Uh, okay. Mad Mike. Right. So Mad Mike and his. Mad Mike Rocket. He was a gentleman who, honestly, I think Frick Frock would be the best to just talk about this. You're into Mad these Mike kind of things. Amazing. He was a man that uh, a while ago, he actually crowdfunded this. Just so you know, he wanted to prove to everyone that the Earth was flat, and the way that he wanted to prove that was like, I'm going to launch myself into space, and then I'm going to see that the entire world below me is nothing but flatness that was his plan so he crowdfunded i think a bunch of stuff and then he built a rocket ship in his he own built house a steam powered rocket yeah that's the amazing thing about this the man built a <laughs> rocket ship in his garage and he blasted off with it well uh he did he died he did or he died what he happened died. is <laughs> what oh, happened no. is when he launched the rocket, the um, steam. No, don't do. OK, what happened is when he launched the rocket uh, the parachute. Um, it it prematurely the deployed parachute did. Yeah, it prematurely deployed and then it ripped off and he just crash landed into the earth and rip mad mike like yeah. i wish video. i could be a tenth as cool as mad mike there's a video of it i don't suggest watching it because it's horrible you can hear him screaming as he dies so don't watch that uh um, the video that i saw had the rocket very far out you, you can't uh, hear from team, the tmz video is the one where you can hear him screaming why does right. tmz have a video anyway so there, there is a video i don't watch it it's but the thing is you got to give the guy some credit because he set himself a goal and he says i want to do it and he did it and um well uh that's more than i could say about a lot of people so <laughs> he had a goal he set out to try he didn't accomplish his goal unfortunately the the world is still not flat but hey <laughs> you know it's all good Wait, so if he uh, didn't die, would the world well, be We'll never know. Yes. Yeah, we'll never know. We cannot figure out now. Ah, uh, it's unfortunate. He will it never is. know. <laughs> well, hopefully someone can take up the mantle of Mad Mike and we can, I don't know, Mad Mike 2. <laughs> Mad <don't>... Mike 2! <laughs> just don't, yes. just don't perish. Perish. In the same way. Do not perish. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> oh, that's the wrong thing. Oh, well. <laughs> Moving on. Um, we have the Oreos yeah, and like chickens Oreos. to talk about. Yeah, oh, Oreos. Yeah. They're better food than chickens. Yeah. Chickens are uh, basically <laughs> a vegetable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Okay, uh, last one. 
to go through in the Oreos. Let's read this. Supreme, oh no. <laughs> Not that's one. Supreme and Oreo are pairing up for a special cookie. Oh no, it is that They're one. They're now reselling <laughs> on eBay for $15,000. An ultra rare red three pack of Supreme Oreos on eBay for $4,000. That's the uh, head or the sub headline to a picture here. So, popular cookie Oreo and luxury streetwear brand Supreme have recently partnered up for a limited edition cookie collaboration. And it might be the most expensive one yet, with Supreme announcing the joint partnership in a tweet on Monday saying Supreme X at Oreo coming soon. So it garnered quite a bit of retweets and likes, and uh, the double stuffed cookies were released for sale at Supreme stores on Thursday for $8. I don't know if it says, it doesn't say $8 each or $8 a box. I don't know. I assume you got more I'm than one, sure it was, but it was then again, who knows? Uh, oh, yeah, it did say, just say three pack. I am sorry. Three pack. Not to be confused with two pack. Anyway. Um, Yes, the bright red Oreos are packaged in a rectangular box shape made to uh, favor Supreme's staple box logo. Supreme, it features Supreme's logo and Oreo's signature sort of stars and stuff around the outside. And uh, yeah, since then, they're popping up on eBay for $33, $4,000, $15,000. And um, you would be an absolute blithering idiot if you paid anything more than eight dollars for this well I mean, eight dollars is quite a lot alex you have to understand That's the culture the culture is exclusivity right you would have something that very Frick, expired population okay could ever, alex, could, could so ever my counter own. argument is people are still selling classic crystal pepsi on ebay that doesn't expire yeah, you think after 15 <laughs> years it'd be it, it's no good anymore <laughs> Yeah, but so if you keep it in its oh container, it won't. Oh, this is garbage. Chris, 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 shut up, Chris. What? Hi. But you're talking about your dumb cookies. Yeah, Steam yeah. is being bullshit. We're talking about our cookies. Shut up. Yeah. Cookies. Yeah, no, no. Um, it, 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 this is what it comes down to, right? It's this, it's this novelty item that's not very popular, and people are going to sell it for an exorbitant amount of money. I mean, I think parallels can also be made with like but classic Magic to... the Gathering cards and stuff along those lines. It's. I would give you that if this thing didn't degrade. Like the longer you keep it, no, the more it's No, but it's like Schrodinger's cookie. Just... If you never open the box, you'll never know if it's degraded. <laughs> Schrodinger's cookie. You, you have to understand. I'm very familiar with the the these the mindset of the hype beast, Alex. And there's one thing that they oh, want above everything else. What they want is to have exclusive things, things that no one else owns. And when they have that, well, I don't really know what else comes after that, but they have it. And and there you go. And that gives them. See, well, I haven't figured out what it some people them, but they invest have their livelihoods into stuff like property or the stock market or stuff along those lines. These folks are all into buying random perishables for exorbitant amount of money hmm. and ho in hopes that it'll appreciate. Money. I mean, <laughs> me IRL. I'm sure people have made money off oh, of I'm this. Sure. We're all going to make money off of this. So see, I guess see the only issue I, I see with something like. The, the Supreme brand is because if, if I remember correctly, are they are they a relatively new brand? Because I. No, oh, no they're they're really okay. so, yeah, because they're I, I, I know that I Why? haven't really seen like their popularized branding up until like with the past two or three years. And it's one of those things is like once it's no longer yeah. popular anymore or no longer mainstream, I assume that it'll then lose value versus something like the Crystal Pepsi where, well, it's it's a soda that everybody knows what soda is and Pepsi is probably not going anywhere anytime soon. So, it's, oh, so, no, yeah, so I, I looked stop, this up because I was curious about what the most expensive foods ever auctioned were. And my God, the amount of, you know what the most expensive food ever auctioned is? Wait, 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 you'll wait. never guess. You'll when never you're guess. Steak, does this include alcohol? Yeah, it, it uh, yes. 
Yeah, it was, I, I definitely I like her. Like it was at, uh, <laughs> the thirteenth or or. Cynic, cynic, if you don't get this right, then I'm ashamed of you. Yes. Why would I get this right? You have to get this right. There's no way you don't get this right. Uh, I I don't know. You're mentioning me specifically, and I'm Where's a fat hint? tub of lard. Uh, uh, OG KFC. You're close. It's OG KFC, like no, the no, very first K that, that was FC. Okay, so according to this list, uh, it's called <laughs> Ham. And it was hosted, uh, the annual, it's a ham from the annual ham breakfast by the Kentucky Farm Bureau. Uh, and in 2018, this 19 pound ham, champion ham, went what? for $2.8 million. $2.8 million. Why, why would you spend that much money on a ham? Was this a charity auction? Yeah, it, so it went to the University oh, okay. of Kentucky. I put the link in the chat. Yeah, 2.8 million ham. Kentucky what? ham. <laughs> I, I'm so confused. All right. There you go. You thought it would be wine. Well, and I well, guess no, that would no, make because, sense. Because if I remember correctly, oh. this specific uh, liquor that I was referring to, I feel like a bottle of that stuff goes for in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So. Probably. Yeah. I mean, so I'm looking at this list right now. And in, well, Szechuan uh, sauce sold for 15,000. No. Lava, lava, dub, dub. <laughs> I'm Pickle Rick. Someone that, traded their car for one of those. <laughs> and, uh, and that cake you were talking about, that uh, from King Edward III, that sold for 30000 But what's crazy is not only that that sold for so little, but okay, when you look at wine and stuff like that, I feel like stuff just gets like artificially inflated because I think the most expensive was McKellen Scotch, which yeah. sold for $2 million. Um, and the only reason it sold for that much was because it was hand painted by uh, some famous uh, Irish artist, but that was it. And it was aged from like right. 1926. Yeah, and, and, but, but liquor is one of those things that we we'll always thing. appreciate value the older it gets. Unless it's like something like Vladdy that's I'll, been I'll sitting in a bag store room for five years. Yeah, yeah, some of them do get bad after I'll a while. Give you, I'll give you two things. Two things that are, that are really bizarre. The cracker from the Titanic, $23,000. All right. That just to give you some, just to give you an idea. The, however, Harambe oh. shaped Cheeto, ninety nine thousand, ninety nine thousand, oh. damn near hundred thousand dollars actually, hundred thousand dollars. But how did they know it looked like Harambe and not just any other gorilla? <laughs> it was the ghost of Harambe. Yeah, that was definitely a uh, time sensitive purchase. There's the Harambe, and it looks exactly like him. It's in his pose. I posed the picture. Ridiculous. It's posed just like Harambe was posing. Th that is oh. that is definitely a gorilla and definitely a Cheeto. God, that Cheeto oh, is okay. dummy and thick. And on that note. Chris can't pay attention anymore, and we're going to call it. We're not going to talk about the chickens. Wait, no, hey, right. I'm no, getting giveaway. angry at just... Steam because it's not letting me play my game because Chris? it's trying to sink to the cloud. <laughs> Chris, shut up. No. about the giveaway? Andrew. I think. Hey, I know, it Alex, me. you no, can Chris, mute me, Chris, Chris. but y Craig can't mute me. He's oh, right. wait, no, we're recording this. You actually can mute me. Damn it. <laughs> I've been bamboozled. <laughs> So, the giveaway. The giveaway. <sighs> You've extracted all the energy out of me, Chris. Yeah. Chris. <sighs> <sighs> Goodness. Okay, so the giveaway. February is the D Frame Mini, which is the uh, roll cage looking like a micro ATX case. Which sorry, mini ITX case, which uh, Simmons actually quite fancied. Head head on over to Extreme Hardware Forum. There will be a link in the description, I suppose. And um, there's several ways you can enter. You can just say I'm in. That's one of them. You can link or say, you know, share the uh, giveaway on your Twitter. It's another entry. Facebook, another entry, etc. So yeah. The odds are very good, I will be honest, and I suggest you go and 
enter. And that's all. Are we going to yes. talk about the chicken things next week then? No. No, we're not talking about no, chickens anymore. Next week. Chris has annoyed me. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Next week. Yeah, next week. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you for joining us and uh, goodbye. Good night. Bye. Yeah, bye. Love you, babies. <laughs>